What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here back again with another video. And some people are going to be seeing this title and go, oh, it's another typical Leaf fan wanting Petrangelo in your dreams. It's not going to happen. Listen, just watch this whole video and see my reasoning behind the Leafs not getting Petrangelo and getting Petrangelo. Now, this is probably not going to be the last time I talk about something like this because, you know, it's super early. The playoffs are still going on. Petrangelo's decision definitely hasn't been made. The Leafs haven't made their big decisions yet. They're still um, making their choices. St. Louis is still making their choices. And of course, free agency, who even knows when that's going to happen because everything is being pushed back, of course, because of what's going on in the world right now. But there's been some interesting topics going around regarding Petrangelo, and I kind of wanted to give my initial thoughts on reasonings why the Leafs will get him and won't get him. Now, if you are a hockey fan, and if you are a Leaf fan, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Lots more videos are on the way. I posted yesterday. Again, I'm posting today, and I'm going to try to be posting every single day from now on. Again, about the NHL and mostly about the Leafs, but if you have something specifically that you want me to talk about, make sure to leave it down below. But I would appreciate a like on this video and subscribing if you do enjoy the content. Now, you're going to see some stuff on the screen, and the first thing I want to bring up uh, before even I say that is, of course, the first move that triggered more Leaf fans to be talking about this is Kasperi Kapanen being traded, clearing up some cap space, uh, and, you know, the Leafs saying, and Kyle Dubas specifically saying that this wasn't going to be the last move that they make, and that they were going to continue to make moves in order to put themselves in a good financial position and a chance to go after free agents to make trades, to find um, teams that might be struggling with their cap as well and try to make hockey trades, make good trades uh, that they can take advantage of and bring in talent. So again, that's something I want to go more in depth on and give some more options, but this is specifically Petrangelo. So let's move on to now the St. Louis Blues are no longer in the playoffs. The St. Louis Blues are a team that was a little beaten up and bruised. Um, they were the defending Stanley Cup champions, but you know they're moving into the offseason now with a lot of big decisions to make. Uh, and the reason why People might be like, well, why would Petrangelo leave? Well, he does want to stay, but St. Louis just signed a massive uh, deal for Justin Falk, which is a gross overpayment. They have Pareko on their back end as well, so they have like three, you know, top four right-handed shot defensemen, which is a good problem to have, but, you know, most teams wouldn't do that. Most teams aren't going to hold on to all three of those guys at the same time, which I mean, personally, I would, but the, the dollar amounts and contracts that they have to sign, which I would like to get to in another video, um, could prevent them from holding on to Petrangelo and, uh, you know, moving forward with him. But we'll get to that in a second. Um, this is just some quotes that came out uh, recently with Alex Petrangelo. He's talking about um, his desire to, to stay with the St. Louis Blues, but he admitted Tuesday that he might be playing somewhere else next season. He said, obviously, I want to stay a Blue. Of course I do. Uh, the defenseman who has played 12 NHL uh, seasons with the St. Louis Blues is obviously a UFA at the end of the season. Uh, it's the only place I've known in professional hockey. Legacy is important. He talked about legacy uh, and wanting to leave behind, you know, uh, his, his career somewhere, wherever he ends up playing. Um, but if it is the end of the road for St. Louis, you know, he would like to continue that. But if it is the end, you know, he wants to leave behind a legacy like Al McInnes, of course, uh, St. Louis Blue alumni and, and one of the greats in the league uh, and he went on to say uh, but whether it's here or somewhere else you want to play to the best of your ability and leave a legacy wherever you are that goes along with on the ice and off the ice and try to impact the organization uh, in the community so whether it's here or anywhere else I think it's important for me to really kind of set my roots wherever it is and I know my wife feels the same way so he's kind of leaving it as an open book he's not specifically saying yeah I'm going to move on but he's also not saying he's a hundred percent gonna stay he's saying he wants to stay a blue but you know this could mean well is the money going to be there for me are they invested in me long term because the st louis team you know they're not that young they're a team that does have a few veterans but are they going to invest in me long term you know when i start to get into these you know mid 30 ages are they going to still want to pay me that much money which to me it doesn't matter if you're a team that's gonna you know try to win you're, you're taking petrangelo's um, good years right now and paying him how he's supposed to be paid. Now that's something, again, we're going to have to talk about because with this, you know, the, the crap that's going around in the world right now, which I can't be saying the words because apparently they're demonetizing or demonetizing videos for saying specific keywords, so I can't really be talking about it, but that thing that's ruining a lot of things right now uh, and hurting people 
and uh, taking people's lives, which is super unfortunate. I pray for you and everybody who's watching this. And if you've lost somebody, I'm so sorry. Um, it, it's been super difficult for everybody I know. But the NHL salary cap, and of course, there's no correlation between losing somebody in the NHL. But moving on to the NHL side of things, which is quite lesser of a problem, uh, their salary cap is going to be staying at $81.5 million for the next few years, which means teams don't really have a ton to work with if they signed big contracts right away, which is hilarious because we're talking about the Toronto Maple Leafs here. But they do have pieces that they can move in and out. You know, a lot of people say they're stuck and they have problems, but they moved on from Kapanen and got a first round pick. If you move on from Andreas Janssen, you're going to get uh, another three and a half million dollars or so, or a little less uh, in cap savings. And you're probably going to end up with a decent pick there. Nothing like the Kapanen deal, but you're going to get something in return. Kerfoot, if they have to do it, same thing. You can argue you could get the same type of package uh, for, for Kerfoot as well. He's a centerman. He plays on the first power play unit uh, on most teams in the NHL. I'm sure he's 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 fast, but he does play on the penalty kill, the the power play. He he can play in all situations, and he looked really good in the in the in the playoffs. I would I would say he wouldn't get as much as Kapanen, but if you package him together with a guy like Dermott or um, another, maybe even that first, you never know who you could get. But the Leafs have options, and other teams have options as well. But you know, teams aren't going to be able to afford to pay Petrangelo these massive contracts uh, that some teams can. And, you know, some teams will be able to load up the trucks and give big deals, but some won't. So let's look at Petrangelo's numbers and why this man is going to get paid. This past season, in 70 games played, he had 52 points. Mind you, he's a right-handed shot defenseman, and that also increases his value. Uh, 16 goals for him. Uh, the season before that, 41 points in 71 games. The season before that, 54 and 78. You guys get uh, the deal here. 450 points in 758 career games. The guy scores, but he also plays a very solid two-way game. He's a captain, uh, so he's got the experience. He's got the leadership ability. He can score. He can play defense. He's got a bit of everything. So when you find guys like this on the open market, a lot of teams are going to be opening up the trucks to acquire somebody like this. Now, the title of the video is going to be something around can the Leafs afford to do this. Now, I went ahead on cap friendly and Leaf fans, I want to say this. It probably doesn't make the most logical sense to sell pretty much, you know, too much in order to acquire somebody. But when somebody like Petrangelo comes out on the market, you do everything you can to try to acquire this piece. But if I'm being honest, I would rather the Leafs go after two defensemen and maybe some depth on their forward core with the extra money if they were to trade guys like Andreas Janssen and Justin Hall, unless they can get Petrangelo to take a pay cut, which I don't know what his dollar amount's going to be. Again, I want that to be a specific video, but in this video, I showed what it would look like even if he took a pay cut, and for the Leafs, it would be quite difficult. Now, I looked at Detroit as a team that would be interested in a guy like Andreas Janssen. You get a third and a fourth. Um, you might be able to get a little bit more, but because he was injured and because of uh, him making over $3 million, Detroit might be interested to add some more offense to their lineup and not have to give up too much, which I feel like a third and a fourth isn't too bad. Um, maybe instead of a fourth, it's a prospect that isn't doing too well in the Detroit system, and they feel like maybe it, it would be worth it for the Leafs to take a shot at him for the Toronto Marlies or for a fourth line option who knows and then with new jersey i just i picked new jersey it could be another team justin hall for a fourth round pick uh boston's fourth in uh, new jersey and then you add a prospect as well if you want for the marlies some guy that maybe just needs a change of scenery much like maybe what detroit could do justin hall's a right-handed shot defenseman on a two million dollar deal I do like him, but if the Leafs were to try to go after Petrangelo, they probably wouldn't be able to pay Justin Hall $2 million, and you're going to see why in the lineup that I've put together, that the Leafs would have to get very creative, and their team might not be as good as people think, even with Petrangelo, but those two deals are the ones I would make to clear out more cap space. Um, why did I put that back on the screen? Here we go. So you're not seeing me right now currently because I have the lineup that I put together. So your first line, Hyman Matthews, Marner, your second line, Robertson, Tavares, Nylander. Then it gets interesting because instead of, you know, Kapanen and Janssen, your third line has Pierre Engvall, who looked really good in the playoffs, mind you. Um, Alexander Kerfoot, who you would hold on to because that center position is important. 
um, Barabanov, whom a lot of people forget the Leafs signed out of the KHL, and he, apparently he's quite good. He's not he's not anything crazy, but he's going to be a good depth piece. Um, and then you've got Korshkov, Brooks, and Spezza. Now you're going to notice Ilya Mikheyev would not be there. The Leafs wouldn't be able to afford him. The only way you're able to afford him is if you bury some of Pierre Engvall's money in the minors, or you trade him and then you put Mikheyev there instead. But I mean, even with burying him, with burying Engvall in the minors, I still don't think the Leafs would have enough money. The only way you're able to keep Engvall and Mikheyev is if you trade Kerfoot as well and move Engvall to center, and then you get a couple extra million dollars uh, that you can save there. But I don't think that the Leafs want to trade Janssen, Kapanen, and Kerfoot. I don't think it makes a lot of sense. Then your fourth line has Igor Korshkov come up, which a lot of people are high on him. He's physical. He can score a little bit, but Again, I'm not really sure if this fourth line works because then you have Adam Brooks who, again, looked pretty decent, but is he good enough to play in the NHL full-time as a fourth liner? And then you bring back Jason Spezza who's admitted that he just wants to play in Toronto uh, and, you know, the money isn't really too much of an issue for him. So he'd probably come back at $700,000 or maybe a little less. I think seven hundred grand is probably what the number would be. Then here's the interesting part. The man of the hour, Alex Petrangelo, $8 million. I don't think that he signs for $8 million. I think he's going to get nine um, anywhere else, and I don't think Toronto can afford that. Eight and a half, I don't even think Toronto can afford that unless you do uh, the Kerfoot trade as well, and then you you know, you know figure out, you put Mikheyev on the left side, and then you put Angval at center. But again, that bottom six would be atrocious. I don't think that the Leafs' bottom six would be all that good. You would have a little bit more physicality in there with Korshkov and, you know, Mikheyev and, and Engvall aren't afraid to throw a few hits. And apparently Barabanov uh, isn't afraid to get in the corners as well. But you're losing that speed of uh, Kerfoot and he looked really, really good in the playoffs. So I don't think that it makes a ton of sense. But you'd have Riley playing with Petrangelo. You'd have Muzzin with Miko Lettinen, who, again, people forget the Leafs signed out of the KHL. I mean, people were calling him the Russian Bobby Orr. Let's cool the brakes on that. Uh, I think that he's probably just going to be a pretty good defenseman in the NHL, uh, a guy that's going to contribute offensively and, and help defensively a little bit. Uh, and then Rasmus Sandin and Timothy Liljegren would be your bottom pairing, which you're, you're relying on these kids to take a step, which I think the Leafs are okay with that. But uh, when you get towards the playoffs is when the true test starts to happen. And then it gets scary from there, whether or not you think that this team is good enough. And then in goal, you still have Freddie and Campbell. Now, another way that you could solve this um, it, and to clear out space and be able to sign Petrangelo to a bigger contract is another video that I wanted to get to. And that's whether or not the Leafs will trade Freddie Anderson. Because if you trade Frederick Anderson... That's $5 million that you have to either use towards a goaltender or find a cheaper option for the future. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, to get Gorgiev, it's going to take, you know, a first and a prospect and this, that, and the other. Well, I mean, Kapanen fetched them a first round pick and a prospect and then an additional piece. So whether or not the Leafs can go out there and get a guy like Gorgiev and sign him to like three and a half million dollars or three million bucks or find another goaltender that can play a 1A, 1B with uh, Jack Campbell for even cheaper, then the Leafs can distribute money differently. But then again, you're, you're grasping at straws. You're trying way too many things. But this was just one option for the Leafs lineup. I'm not saying this is guaranteed what's going to happen. I'm not saying that this is what's supposed to happen. But this is just my idea of how the Leafs could get Petrangelo in the lineup. But again, an $8 million uh, pay cut, I, I don't really know if that's going to get it done. But you guys can let me know down below. Again, please, if you're going to comment down below saying delusional Leaf fan, you need to watch this video again. I did not say that this was going to happen or it makes sense for it to happen. I honestly think Petrangelo could end up staying with the Blues or he's going to end up getting a pretty large contract from somebody else regardless of what's going on in the world right now. The only way he comes to Toronto is if he does take a pay cut. And depending on, you know, his situation and what he wants to do, I'm not really sure that happens. But again, this won't be the last time I talk about Petrangelo or, of course, the Toronto Maple Leafs. So let me know down below what you guys think. Leave me some suggestions down below. Um, I appreciate you guys so much for sticking around. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Uh, more rumors and trade videos are coming. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Peace.